All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Today we're going to look at uh, some Microsoft 365, some accessibility features. Uh, we're going to start right here in the Teams meeting. So let me share my screen. OK, so let me pull back up the meeting window here. The first thing that we find in the meetings, uh, if you click on the meatball menu, the three dots here, you will find that you can, under language and speech, you can turn on live captions. So this will allow the captions to show up at the bottom of the screen. You can go to the three dots. I'm speaking in English. You can go to the three dots here and say, change the spoken language. And I can choose another language that on my end that I would want the captions to be in. For example, if I select Korean, and then as the presenter speaks in English, it will translate the caption into Korean. I'm going to change that back to English. All righty. So that's just how you can enable captions on uh, Microsoft 365. Another thing you can do within your Teams meeting is you, you click the three dots. And besides here, turning on live captions, I can go to my settings and here is the accessibility option. So these, this would be your default for your meeting. So I can have it always show captions for my meetings. Also, if you have a need for sign language, you can enable that and you can manage your signer. So Microsoft, of course, doesn't supply signers, but if you have signers at the university in our case, that would be signing for you. Their screen will become more prominent. It's also a higher resolution. So you would always have your signers and you can have up to two signers assigned for your sign language. So that's where you will find that. Now what I'm gonna show you today, I'm actually working on a Windows 11 computer. So if you don't have Windows 11 yet, uh, it will be, of course, coming out to you soon. But I want, do want to show you some accessibility. A couple of these things are only in Windows 11, uh, but you will also find some things in Windows 10. So um, if I come down here to the Start menu in Windows 11 and go to Settings, here is you. I will find uh, accessibility. So here are a lot of options you have for the vision, hearing, and interaction. Another way to get to those settings is if I, on the Windows machine, I can just hit the Windows key on my keyboard and the I, and that will bring up the settings and I can go right to accessibility. Okay, so that's kind of a shortcut. You can also, down at the bottom where you have a speaker bar, if you select that speaker bar, here is accessibility as well. That will take you right to the accessibility where you can enable these options. Or if I select more accessibility settings, it will take me right to that same location. OK, so that's probably the. I found the quickest and best way to click on the speaker, go to accessibility and have some things here that I can turn on or if I can get to all my options by clicking on more accessibility settings. One nice feature, and I haven't tried this on a Windows 10, so if you have Windows 10, try the next two features on yours. So I'm going to open up a web browser, and in this case, I have a YouTube video about Windows 11 features. But here, I can press Windows Control L for live caption. So if I hold the Windows key down, hit Control and L, you'll notice up above here it's ready to, for caption. So anything that is playing on my computer, it will create a live caption. So let me just play this video. So you see I have those options up here now, and I did not enable my sound on my local computer when I shared my screen. But you get the uh, you get the example here that you can uh, enable live caption on anything that is playing on your computer. So just that Windows Control L. 
another nice feature. Let me just open up a, a OneNote notebook. Uh, you, in case you don't know, and I'll show you later, um, there's a dictate feature in a lot of Windows applications. I don't have it here in Word. Um, so if I go to insert, I can have an auto recording and have it uh, insert that auto recording. But if I want to dictate what I'm saying, um, I can do the same in Excel with this little shortcut. So I could just use Windows H. I'm not sure what the H is for, but Windows H. So I'm gonna hit Windows H. And now this is listening to me, period. I should be able to dictate and it will type what I am speaking, period. What's interesting here, this, I mean, it'll do everything. So it's not like dictate. When I say period, it's uh, listening to me. It had area there. So anyway, it's not perfect. I mean, it's not like dictate, but at least you can get everything typed up and you can go down back in and uh, modify it. But hopefully dictate, which I'll show you later, will be coming to some of these other applications. It's already in um, Word and PowerPoint, as we'll see here shortly. Another kind of hidden gem, and these are all just kind of I consider hidden gems, is let's say that I'm on, and, and I know it works in Edge, and right now I only think it works in Edge. So if you use Edge as your web browser, and let me just go to University of Missouri, missouri.edu. So if you're using Edge as your browser, you can go up to the very beginning of your address, like before the HTTPS, and I'm just going to type in read and colon slash slash. This will put the immersive reader function on the web page. So if I hit enter here. So here it is and it has the immersive reader. I can have it read the page aloud and then I can. There's also some text pref, uh, preferences where I can, um, you know, change the the column style, um, the, the text spacing to improve reading some grammar tools. You know, you can highlight the different uh, parts of the speech and break it into syllables. So uh, here's my reading preferences. You can do line focus. So, so if I turn this on and I want to focus just on certain lines. And of course it has, uh, when your cursor changes to a star, you can put it over and, and it'll show you a picture. I'm not sure if this has it here, but it kind of describes the word and, and you can translate the page. So you can do a lot of stuff in here. I can, like I said, I can come here and I can read this aloud. So I can pause that and you may not be able to hear it, but here you can change uh, the speed, uh, the voice. Wow, a lot of different voices here. Interesting. I haven't played with the voice, but so you might check that out. Read, you know, if you go to different websites, just type, try to type read colon slash slash and see what kind of functions you get. Let me see what I have here with the three dots. No, there's nothing there. Okay. All right. So if I close that, I'm back to these preferences. Let's go ahead now and jump into some Word, and I'll just show you some dictation there and some other features that we have as far as accessibility. Um, so here on this dictate, let me just give some uh, space here at the top. OK. So now on this dictate, you don't have to do any training. There's other applications that we've used in the past where you have to kind of train your voice. Um, what's impressive is this dictation. Um, it actually holds the world record for accuracy. So let's just see how we do here today. I mean, sometimes it's difficult um, since I'm in a, in a meeting using the same mic as it's going to use here. We'll see how accurate or how it does. So I'll click on dictate. So now it beeps and the it is highlighted, so it's listening to me. Let me mute my phone. New line. I'm getting a phone call from somebody and I'm ignoring them. Bold that. Bold that. New line. 
We'll go ahead and turn that off now. And then here's some settings you can do. Uh, you can have it auto enable auto punctuation. As you notice, when I pause there, it did. It filtered sensitive uh, phrases. Okay. Of course, it's expecting me to click and uh, speak in English, but it did a pretty good job. Um, you just kind of get used to how to do bold that and all the other phrases. And to find the other phrases, if I come here to this question mark, it's going to help me learn how to do um, dictation, right? So if I want to use punctuation, I would say, you know, like period or full stop, comma, question mark, new line. So this is what you you would say this to get this result, this output. OK, so you might look through those. Here's some editing functions. So if you really use this pretty extensively, you can add comments. I mean, you can just do all of it. Um, uh, just with dictation mathematics. So I really haven't um, used it extensively like this, but if you find this something that would help you, uh, I'd encourage you to go through this help here uh, to get additional assistance. But this will get you started. For what I use, um, it does a good job. Another thing you can do, let me close that. You could have it read aloud to you. And before I show you these other features, um, I added some of these like read aloud and um, the Im immersive reader to my toolbar. OK, but if you don't have it here yet, you could always go to review and here's the read aloud here. So I could come here. I could click on a section here and I can say read aloud. So I can pause that. Here's my and you, this little bar. Once I'm in read aloud, it'll, it'll pop this up. Uh, here's my settings. Here's my female voice. I'm by female. It'll read me as a female voice or a male voice and the speed. OK. Another thing is under view, you'll get the immersive reader options. As right here, so if I click on immersive reader. Now I'm in the, this immersive reader options. It kind of same thing that we saw earlier, but here I could check my column width, uh, even the color of the page. You know, for some people it's easier to read, maybe a white on black. Your line focus to help, uh, you know, three lines, five lines to help mm. people focus. So then as they're reading, it'll scroll down through that. And then the spacing and here's read aloud right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. But what I have done it's I use my quick access toolbar. Normally that's at the top. So let me just go back. I'm going to turn off read aloud and I'm going to show above the ribbon. Normally your quick access toolbar is up here. You'll see a little drop, your little drop. So I'm going to drop that down. I like to show mine below the ribbon. So it's not it's not hidden. Then I can come in here and I'll say I want to customize my quick access toolbar. Here I can see more commands and then instead of popular, if you can change that to all commands and then I can look for, you know, like immersive reader. I can look in here for immersive reader. I, uh, I can start typing here up here so I can type in I, I, uh, immersive reader right here. And then I add that over to this side here. Uh, the other one I had was read aloud. Read aloud, and then I can just simply add that to my quick access toolbar. So if it's something that I use a lot, I can put it right here. Here's a print, you know, print preview and print. So for print documents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, kind of a handy thing to add here. Uh, and accessibility now in Excel. Let me pull up an Excel document. I had one here ready. Some people have asked about um, reading in Excel. And, and another thing I will mention is Excel, all these applications do have a quick access toolbar. So I might go ahead and drop that down, show the show the quick access toolbar below the ribbon so it's right here i have already have it it's called speak cells 
But again, I, I would want to come in here and say more commands. The, the speaks, let me take that out and I'll show you how to add these again. I, I know it's out speak cells is it'll read the cells to me. So I just type in speak. Oh, popular commands. Yeah, make sure to change that to all commands. There we go. Um, and then I can do a search here for speak. Speak cells. So now I can um, speak cells and I believe I need to say stop speaking. If otherwise, it'll just keep reading all the cells to me. So I'm going to say add that one as well. I'm going to speak cells and then stop speaking, which is uh, it used to be called speak cells, stop speaking, but now they call it to just stop speaking. OK, so I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to add both of those. So now I can come to one of these and I can. Um, you know what I'm going to do now? Now that I've done that, let me see if I can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on computer sound here. OK, so let's see if you can hear this. I'm going to highlight one of these and I'm going to click on speak cells. Electric guitar, six string. So it said that two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Jimi Hendrix. OK, and then if I want to stop, I'll hit stop speaking. Hopefully that you could hear that. I'm not sure if you could, but uh, it was speaking those cells mm -hmm. and then it, it, you can stop speaking a cell. So those are our handy features. Um, and now that I have said that, let me see. I haven't looked here. If I say insert, I do not see a dictate. Uh, you know, where you could enter your stuff. So let me just see if I hit the Windows H here. Windows H, do I have, I do have the option. Twenty seven. OK, so yeah, I could uh, speak those. I do have the option. So I, I can speak uh, amounts or sentences or values or something into the cell. So that will be something that you would have to play with. Like I said, um, hopefully they'll add the dictate so you could go like new line. You know, you maybe have better control. All right. The next thing we've we showed you some Word and some uh, Excel. Let's look at PowerPoint. What can we do in PowerPoint for accessibility? Um, I know you can do dictation. I mentioned that. All right. Uh, so if I go, here's dictate right here. So I could go here, uh, click on dictate, and dictate some information. I would first have to get a text box in here. There we go. And then turn that off. And you can drop that down and get other information. So that's dictate. So we're kind of getting the hang of dictate. Um, let me see if you have any immersive reader. You do have check accessibility. So if you're making slides, you can check that to see if it meets a lot of accessibility um, requirements, right? So I can say, hey, and it says, well, welcome to accessibility tab. It'll tell you when you do presentations what you might be missing on your presentation. And this is important, right? Any kind of uh, alternative text, uh, slide title, use caption for audio and video, and it'll tell you where uh, you know, slide 12. Online media, OK? So when you're making a um, presentation, check your accessibility of that presentation because we want want to um, include everyone. OK. And again, that was under let me look here. I was looking for yeah, under review and then check accessibility. OK. Um, one thing that they've recently added is the ability to include. Uh, maybe you have a signer, right? 
um, in somebody's remote and then maybe they're not using Microsoft Teams meetings that has now the, uh, the, the ability to sign. What you could do is put a cameo of a signer or a presenter so they can maybe read lips or um, whatever the need is. So I could come up here to insert and it's called cameo. A cameo um, will capture and I, I opened up my laptop just because I have my camera for the meetings. But let me open my laptop up and you can see me here. So I could take this cameo image. And I can place it. Let's say I'm going to place it. Right here. The nice thing about this is if I click on cameo, I can make this whatever shape I wish. And because it, it, it's just. Um, it's another object, so I can make this like the same as this oval here. OK, so now when I present this. Well, it's on the it's on the other screen. Hang on a second. Let me go to slideshow and I will say to make this on this monitor. Let me see. Maybe it's the other monitor. OK, oops, let me go back to the slide. So now I'm up here and if I was a signer, I could sign language or you can just, you know, you don't have to use it for accessibility. Uh, it's handy for that. You can use it in, in any uh, setting and it would work in Zoom because I'm just I'm just sharing my screen. So. Uh, you could use it in any type of presentation. The nice thing, this is just a another object, so I could take this now and I could copy it. And I could put it on any other slide, right? I can come in here and I can just paste that object here. And I can move it around, right? And so you could put it in any location on every slide. So you're kind of part of the um, presentation. So that's called Cameo. Something else is. I've got about five more minutes, so. Anytime you have an audio or audio video file and you save it to your teams, which is SharePoint or OneDrive, you can have it generate. Uh, a transcript for you, so let me just open up. I'm going to open up my OneDrive because OneDrive is just like. Um, it doesn't matter if it's on OneDrive or SharePoint. It's really all SharePoint, but I'm going to go to my. Uh, let's look under my training videos. I'll tell you what, let me go to my recordings. I do a lot of different recordings, so here's one. This is a MP4. Um, I'm going to open it up in the cloud and I will mention that the only way to generate this is in the cloud. So let me right click on OneDrive and say. Um, open online. This is Windows 11. I have to right click and I say view online. So you can go out to office.com and log in and get to the same thing. But let me just and I should have logged in here first. Sorry about that. OK, so here I am in my. On the cloud is where everything's actually stored. So I'm going to go to my recordings. Now, all things OneDrive, if I open this up, it's going to open up in what's called Stream, Microsoft Stream. And I've seen, let's come back to this because I've already, this is an example of one I've already done. I got to find one that hasn't been generated yet. Okay. So this one hasn't been generated, so this is a brand new uh, MP4 or audio file. So what I could do is open it up. I have an option up here at the top that says video settings. If I open that up, here is a transcript and caption. What I would want to do um, is, is open that up and I can generate a transcript and it says what was the language in? I can say it was in English, but you can choose whatever language the video was in and click on generate and it'll generate that and I'll show you what it looks like um, on this other video. You also have the option of creating chapters. So chapters is maybe in the video. It makes like a table of contents. So maybe in the video at you know at 405 we're talking about a certain topic and then later on in the video 
at 716, we're talking about something else. So I can mark chapters of the video, and then people can use that to go directly to that part of the video. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up one of those other slides as an example. The one that I had, let me just sort by name, because it had the one at the very top. All things OneDrive had both. So let me click on all things OneDrive. So here, let me close this. Here I see there's a transcript of this available and chapter. So I'm going to click on transcript first. So it has inline editing. So I could download it <laughs> if I want to download the transcript uh, for, some, for something else. Or I can also go to edit the video. But again, it's really accurate, but you might uh, have, you know, have uh, needed to, to do a correction. Another nice thing is I can do a search here and I can search this video and I can come to maybe this part. We're talking about migrated box files. So I could click that and it's going to take me right to that part of the video. OK, so I can search here for a particular topic and I can go right to that. I can also edit it as I mentioned, as need be. So let me close that and now look at the chapter. So this, I said, OK, at 240, I showed people how to log into OneDrive. So they could click on this. It shows them how to log in. And then we talked about manage backup folders. So now I can click on this, manage backup folders, and it takes me to that part of the video. So that's the benefit of having um, chapters. So. That's all I have prepared. Uh, I, I did mention the sign language earlier. Uh, is there any questions about anything that we went over? Okay, well, let me stop this recording.